and welcome back to my channel. I'm Melanie and today I'm gonna tell you how I got into investment banking. So if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and like. That would be greatly appreciated. So, so I'm gonna start with my career choice from the very beginning in high school. Here comes my life story. Basically, I wanted to either be a lawyer or be a businesswoman um, ever since I was really little. So I knew that, you know, I wanted to be in the office with Sue, dress up and be on the same level as men. So when I was in high school, I went to Stanford to attend one of their summer camps on law and legislation and jurisdiction. And I really hated it. I really hated law because I thought you have to memorize all of these rules, regulations, and it just didn't seem flexible to me. So I was like, okay, like I am not doing law. So by the time I applied to college, I really, really wanted to do business. But I didn't know which part of business I wanted to do. Initially, I wanted to do entrepreneurship. Then I wanted to do marketing. Then I was really interested in um, technology and then finance. So my school was kind of famous for entrepreneurship. We were required to take courses um, all around a business, right? Like how to start a business. What are the business laws? How does marketing work? How does operations work? What's financial accounting and what, how do you use accounting? What's a capital market? So I was really, really lucky and I'm really thankful that I got to learn all of these aspects of business and finally decided what I really wanted to do. So out of all of these, finance interested me the most because my professor in college was awesome. Instead of, you know, teaching finance in a very traditional kind of dry way, she was teaching finance in such an exciting and elaborative way that I felt very excited to go to her class every single day, right? Like she would assign us to listen to all of these podcasts or go on Wall Street Journal and see what's the latest finance news for today and how that kind of will influence the stock market or how it will influence the economy. And that type of critical thinking, I think that was really, really important instead of just learning, oh, what's the cap M? What's the DCF valuation? So fast forward, I became really, really interested in finance and I knew that I wanted to do something in finance, but I was kind of confused and I didn't know the different like aspects to finance. I didn't know what a hedge fund was. I had no idea the difference between private equity, investment banking, and you know, I was just kind of lost and confused. So I, in my sophomore year of college, I applied to as many finance related internship as I could and landed this ex two week externship in Shanghai, China um, with a like asset management firm. And I really hated it. Like just, I was like, okay, like I love money, but I don't want to manage other people's money and earn a commission. Like that's not what I want to do. So. After sophomore year, I was like, okay, no asset management for me. And then during my junior year, I did an internship in equity research. So what we did was looking at stocks that are about to go public um, and then kind of like pitching the idea of the company should invest in this IPO stock and why, for how much, like what's the quantity. I actually really enjoyed it looking at IPO and capital markets. And that's when I kind of understood like the difference between capital markets versus debt markets versus, you know, like sales and trading versus merger and acquisitions and all of that. So I would say after my junior year internship was when I decided that I wanted to do mergers and acquisitions. So for those of you who don't know, a merger and acquisition is when two companies come together or when company A acquired company B. Mergers and acquisitions is also a product group versus there are other groups such as industry group in banking. If you're interested in that, you can see my uh, previous video or I can make a new video on like the different groups in banking. After I graduated from college, I started an internship with this company that focuses on Asia-based 
mergers and acquisitions. They have like eight offices all across Asia and me being from Asia, I had an advantage and I really liked the nature of, you know, finding a buyer or reaching out to buyers for a potential company. But I was doing mostly private companies. So then I decided that, okay, I want to do mergers and acquisitions. Preferably, I would want to do a do deals that are similar or within the category of consumer retail. But then I decided that I wanted to do a deal that's a public company. So that's how I, you know, narrowed my focus and found my current job. Um. So that's kind of how I decided to do investment banking and specifically public company mergers and acquisitions. So in terms of how I got my full time, that's just another story. So I will end this video right here and make a separate video on how I got a investment banking offer. But before we go, I want to quickly recap if you are a still in high school or if you're still in university, it does seem pretty daunting and scary to figure out exactly what you want to do, but hopefully these advice can help you. So first, always have a vision of where you see yourself. This doesn't have to be specific. For example, for me, I knew that I wanted to be in a, the business world, um, working alongside with men and women. I want to be a powerful woman. Number two, I always wanted to try different things, for example, such as law, and then I tried it, I hated it, and I moved on. So always give yourself room to, to try different things. Point number three, be open to the different aspect of your interest. For example, I was interested in business, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to do marketing or IT entrepreneurship or finance. So I took different classes and really narrowed through and get, got a more in-depth understanding so yeah, after you kind of figure out what you want to do, you have to really think about what brings you joy and what brings you happiness emotionally because you want to do something that you're excited to do and you wake up every single morning and you're looking forward to doing it. For example, for me, I really love the aspect of enjoying financial news. When I wake up, I love listening to podcasts. I love reading about what's going on in the world and what's happening in the finance world. So that part was kind of what motivated me to study finance. After that, point number five, after you decided, please stay focused. Um, you know, it's easy to... Uh, question your decisions and be like oh should I have done something else instead but you know if you don't stick through and have at least a year or two years of experience you'll never know why you don't like something or why exactly it's not working out for you so if you're interested in finance like for me, I tried different internships, I tried wealth management, I tried equity research, and then I decided that I wanted to do mergers and acquisitions. So yeah, it's really important to stay focused. And point number six, please remember that it is so important to learn as much as you can Especially when you are young, you are a sponge and you want to absorb as much knowledge as you can. And I hope this video helped you. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave it down in the comments below. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!